Okay. Um, thanks. Um, first of all, I thank the organizers giving me opportunity to present our recent study here. Today, um, I talk about Gibbs paradox in stochastic thermodynamics. And this work was done in collaboration with Hiura Nakagawa and Yoshimura. Uh, let's start with the main result. We study N interacting identical brownian particles in contact with the heat bath of temperature T. Such a system can be described by Langevin equations for the coordinate gamma, and uh, gamma is a correction of the positions and momentums of the particles. If you like uh, overdump the descriptions, you can ignore the momentum degrees of freedom. The interaction between the particles is described by the Hamiltonian. And, uh, and the identical nature of the particles is represented by the ham uh, symmetry property of the Hamiltonians. Sigma gamma is a transformation of the coordinate um, induced by the uh, um, permutations of particle levels. For equilibrium systems, the stationary distribution of the system is given by the canonical distributions. Beta is the inverse temperatures, and Z is the normalization constant, which is called the Poisson function. For these systems, we can con uh, consider thermodynamics by introducing a control parameter alpha. The time dependence of alpha is given externally without uh, mentioning uh, time evolutions of gamma d. Such a framework is called stochastic thermodynamics. The first problem of, of the uh, stochastic thermodynamics is to define the free energy consistent with the second law of thermodynamics. Maybe I think some of you like thermal entropy so much, so you may assume that thermodynamic entropy is given by the thermal entropy. And free energy is defined as the expectations of Hamiltonian um, minus Ts, S is the thermal entropy. These expressions gives a formula connecting the free energy and the partial function, just given the normalization integrations of the Gibbs factor. This expression seems quite reasonable. The main message of my talk today is that there exists a quasi-static process such that the difference of free energy is not equal to the quasi-static work. This quasi-static process is illustrated in this figure, quasi-static decomposition, which I will explain later. This result implies that the definition of thermodynamic entropy using the Shannon entropy is not consistent with thermodynamics. So what is the correct definition of the free energy? We assume following two conditions. The first condition is that the difference of free energy should be equal to the quasi-static work for any quasi-static process. And temperature dependence of the free energy is given by the gibbs helmholtz relations. Indeed, we can show that these two relations uniquely determine the free energy up to an additive constant. Applying this result to a simple cases, particles in a box. Then we obtain the formula connecting free energy, 
that's defined with partition function. The most important point here is that any dependence of the free energy. You can see n factorial here. This means that n factorial naturally appears from the definitions of free energies. You may be familiar with this type of formula when you run statistical mechanics. For example, if you uh, uh, start with quantum statistical mechanics, then you first assume that some like entropy is given by uh, Shannon entropy or Hohenheimer entropy for the density matrix correspond to Kanakan ensemble. Then you define free energy is given by expectation of Hamiltonian minus Ts. Then we take the classical limit for these expressions. Then in that case, you obtain the formula connecting the free energy and classical integrations of a phase space um, of the Gibbs factor. This argument is completely correct. Then from this fact, you may think that n factorial comes from quantum mechanics. However, this is not correct. I mean, this argument is correct. This formula is obtained from the classical limit of quantum systems, but n factorial, to understand n factorial, quantum mechanics is not necessary. As I said before, n factorial come from the definitions of free energy, such that free energy difference is equal to quasi static work. Now I give you the proof. The most important and most non-trivial point is the construction of quasi-static decompositions. This is the illustrations of quasi-static decompositions. You first uh, prepare the systems, and we want to decompose the systems with specified number of N1 and N2. You may think that such a process can be easily constructed. For example, by uh, inserting a separating wall. However, such a naive uh, decomposition cannot fix the number of a specified regions. For example, um, number of particles in the left regions depend on the configurations before inserting the wall. So we have to prepare special type of confining potential to fix the number of particles in a specified region. I give some example. H is the original uh, Hamiltonians, and V con is the confining potential. This is given by these expressions. If the number of particles in the region D1 is equal to N1, then this potential takes a value zero. Otherwise, this potential takes a positive value. Then when we consider the case, beta kappa is sufficiently large, then N1 particles is confined in the region D1. Lambda is a control parameter. When lambda equals zero, the, uh, the system is at original systems. 
and lambda, uh, we assume the lambda is a function of time. And when lambda equals one, uh, we have the decomposed uh, uh, state. Then uh, we, we can easily construct it, um, slowly varying functions of, of, of time, lambda t. So in this way, we construct quasi static decomposition using rather special uh, confining potential. For this process, we can um, have quasi static work. This is the standard formula. And the important thing is that quasi static work is given, uh, is expressed in terms of the partial functions at the final state and initial state where the, the lambda is uh, um, uh, partition functions associated with Hamiltonian H lambda. The initial uh, partition function is nothing but the uh, original partition functions. And partition function at the final state is estimated as this form when kappa goes to infinity. This expression takes a slightly complicated form, but the essence is very simple. This is a partial function of the restricted ensemble such that N1 particles are in the region D1. And we don't know, which, we, we cannot specify which particles belong to D1. Now, starting from these expressions, we can uh, calculate uh, this partition functions using the symmetry properties of Hamiltonian. As I said before, Hamiltonian is symmetric for permutation of, of, of particle levels. Using this property, we can immediately obtain that the result is very simple. Partition function is given by the product of partition function of each box multiplied by the number of combinations of choosing N1 particle from N particles. Summarize the result, we obtain the precise static work as follows. Now looking at these expressions, you can immediately confirm that. If you use the uh, sum entropy for the sum entropy, you can find that Free energy difference is not equal to this quasi static work. On the other hand, if we use the definitions of the free energy, such that the free energy difference is equal to this quasi static work, we can uniquely uh, uh, determine the end dependence of free energy. And uh, uh, more careful and complete uh, uh, derivations of TV depend including TV dependence um, of the free energy was discussed in the paper. I think this is basic, very basic issues in stochastic thermodynamics and also in statistic equilibrium statistical mechanics. Okay, so now this session is for information processing. Now I will show you this result is closely related to information thermodynamics. As I said before, just inserting the separating wall cannot fix a particle number. I prepared special confining potential to fix the number of particles in the specified regions. But instead of preparing such confining potential, we can also use measurement and feedback process. I mean, we first measure the particle number in the region. This case is just one. And 
we insert the wall. Then we, in this way, we can fix the particle number in the specified region. This is um, measurement and feedback process. Now, we know that thermodynamics can be extended involving such measurement and feedback process. I don't explain the formula itself, but according to the formula of the information thermodynamics, um, we can calculate the free energy difference. And uh, actually we obtain this result. So if the free energy in the information thermodynamics is consistent with thermodynamic relations, then actually this relation gives the free energy. But to prove the statement, we have to uh, construct quasi static process associated with measurement feedback process. Indeed, this was discussed by the paper by Horowitz and Pound. And actually, they give the such examples in sentences. But as far as I see, there was no mathematical expressions of the protocol. And re recently, uh, expressed, expressed presentation of the protocol by Horowitz Pound was uh, uh, presented in the paper and with a discussion of the relevance within factorial programs. In this viewpoint, our results give another construction method of such precise static work corresponding to the measurement and feedback process. <clears throat> Finally, um, I give you another approaches to n factorial problems. The first, there were some references um, mentioning the partition function of the composite systems. This expression is quite uh, similar to uh, our result, but the problem is that what is the definitions of the partition function of the composite systems? In classical mechanics, a partition function should be given by the normalization constant of the canonical ensemble. So we have to specify the confining potential fixing the particle numbers. As far as I checked, there was no argument. So in this sense, our result gives a um, precise answer. What is the definitions of the dispersion functions? As, as, uh, as another approach, uh, free energy is defined by the fluctuation uh, property from the fluctuation properties. For equilibrium cases, large dimension function characterize, characterizing macroscopic uh, uh, properties of uh, some like variables is equal to some dynamic functions. Therefore, one can define the free energies using the uh, fluctuation properties. Indeed, in the case of macroscopic systems, we can identify um, any dependence of the free energy. However, this argument cannot be applied to finite systems, except for non-interacting particle cases. And quite recently, and factorial problem uh, was discussed from the viewpoint of absolute irreversibilities. As you know, the free energy is also calculated based on non equilibrium processes using the Jardinsky equalities. 
And if the reverse surpass is singular, Jarzinski equality is modified. And we can consider modified Jarzinski equality for free mixing processes. Then we compare the difference, we discuss the difference between the same type particles are mixed case or uh, different type particles are mixed case. So analyzing this, uh, this case, we can um, argue uh, n factorial. But uh, uh, this argument is correct for non-interacting particle case, but as far as I see, there was no proof for general cases. If we want to uh, have a proof for this statement, we have to uh, use quasi-static process connect, uh, related to uh, mixing processes. This is nothing but our construction. Now, um, I summarize my talk. We construct a quasi-static decomposition process for small thermodynamic systems. And we assume that free energy difference is equal to quasi-static work. Then we can derive n factorial factor of the formula. Thank you for your attention. Um, I cannot hear uh, any things. No, we, we, we hear you. We hear you. Um, I see some question in chat, right? So, yeah, you want uh, to answer questions now? Uh, we have two questions in chat, and uh, but we can first uh, invite uh, PhD students and the uh, recurring uh, investigator to ask the questions. Then we can also read the questions from uh, the chat. So if you have any questions, please uh, write up your hand. Okay, so I answer to the questions yes, in chat, right? I so, see that, so yeah. yeah okay, yeah. so the first question is that if I understand this correctly, the only condition on the particles are that they are identical. No other statistics involved, right? Yes, right. So uh, the point is that and the nature, um, identical uh, 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 nature is expressed in terms of Hamiltonian. So um, that, that's all, right? And the second question is that, is there an experimental procedure to construct the frequent potential that avoid measurement? Okay, that, that was very um, in, in, uh, important question that I back to the, yeah. Yes, so um, this potential actually uh, uh, counts the number of particles number of particles and uh, I so far I don't have any idea of realizing the, uh, such potential in their experiments of course it's easy to have the numerical uh, simulations but so uh, this is uh, um, from the standard viewpoint of, of interacting particle systems this is a uh, any, uh, anybody interacting potentials so such many body interacting potential, cannot be uh, designed in real systems. But uh, uh, I think, um, of course, uh, it is not easy to design the particle interactions because this is many body interaction systems, but uh, we may have another idea to, 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 to realize such potentials. Uh, but, but I don't have any uh, explicit ideas. 
Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, we have uh, one more question by uh, Farshid. Uh, so, Farshid, uh, please. Uh, yeah, so I uh, just want to make sure I understand uh, the point you were trying to make earlier. Uh, you uh, mentioned that if you use Shannon entropy for uh, distinguishable but identical particles, yes. you do not get the fact the one over n factorial term. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, you mentioned right many of right. Uh, uh, yes. So uh, because yeah. Um, if we use the uh, entropy, we get the home, right? So this is very simple, just uh, uh, inserting the current kind of ensemble to the uh, this expression, then you can get uh, this uh, relations. But uh, uh, this uh, case, we, we can directly confirm that free energy difference is not equal to quasi aesthetic work. And this quasi aesthetic work uh, was constructed by, um, uh, uh, by our method. So, um, I see. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, so, at the moment, we have one uh, more question, and uh, this uh, should be a quick one. Please, uh, Rugen no, Bao. Oh. Bao, yeah. Yeah. Bao. Yeah. So we will have we will Thank have you, more time more time uh, later for additional questions and additional uh, discussion. So again, you can ask uh, your question, or please. Okay, can you hear me, Professor? Can yeah. you hear me? Yes. Oh, you just mentioned that uh, the previous words are limited to the non-interacting particle case including the 2017's work by Masahiro Wuda. But I think that they just assumed the validity of the flush Russian theorems with absolute irreversibility. Yes. And from, it seems that the theorems also can be applied to indirect and particle case. So they, they, they show they, that the, uh, uh, the Of course, uh, uh, final conclusion is correct, of course, but uh, the uh, problem is that uh, 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 logics, I mean, uh, detailed um, argument, right? So um, as far as I understand, um, their, their, their argument can, uh, is, only, is valid only for the special cases, no interacting particle cases. Otherwise, they, they just uh, compare the two different case, uh, process, but uh, um, it is not easy to conclude um, any factorial for the general cases. However, in their in their article, they claim that they generalized the previous result to to in the presence of in the particle interactions to the case. Yeah, from my from my understanding, the Fletcher theorems can be applied to interacting particle case. Okay, so you say that, but so oh, I, I, okay, but I, I, they didn't, uh, and they didn't give the any proof, and they actually are honestly writing that this is valid for, for um, they, this argument is valid for uh, no interacting cases. Of course, no interacting cases we can estimate some uh, modification part, and uh, you, you don't agree that. <laughs> Okay, I'll check. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, so uh, if you have the, uh, maybe uh, please send uh, some communication to me, right? So maybe we can discuss more, right? Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, all thank you very much, Tiniti, for uh, this great talk, for this great discussion. I hope you will be able to follow the whole session and to join the discussion uh, after that which